Time for NBC 10 Coffee Break with Frank and Friends. A Monday edition. Thank you for spending some time with us here on Facebook Live. Friends today, besides uh, Zach, include Michael Walsh, who's been involved in some amazing research over almost 20 years now, uh, yeah. on an incident in World War II that you won't find in many of the history books, but you can sure learn about it in the two books that he has written on it and also a documentary that's in the works now. And we'll talk to you about uh, this, this amazing project in just a moment. As always, of course, talk to us, post here on Facebook about uh, what you think about what we are talking about. Top, one of the top stories this morning on the, the Sunrise News, the morning news over on NBC10, has to do with that building. It's at the intersection of Mineral Spring Avenue and I think High Service Avenue mm -hmm. in North Providence. Uh, dilapidated building. Mayor's been trying to get it torn down for a long time. You know the background. Probably it's owned by uh, Dr. Anthony Farina. For some reason, that's still unclear, at least to me, why he didn't want to tear it down. But he didn't want to tear it down. Mayor said he should tear it down. So instead, the doctor had an artist to paint this caricature on the wall. You can see it's supposed to, it's supposed to uh, present uh, the mayor in kind of an unflattering position. You know what we're talking about. This has been a, a big, big story for a long time. Well, today's development was that there was a 9 o'clock news event, a news conference, a statement by uh, the mayor about uh, what's going to happen to this building. It's already half demolished, of course, uh, but the essence of the 9 a.m. statement from North Providence Mayor Charles Lombardi is that uh, he's glad it's all coming down. Our reporter, Lindsay Idaluka, was, uh, was there for the 9 a.m. Uh, 9 a.m. announcement, if that's what you, what you think, what you could call it. And she says that he basically said he's happy to have it ripped down, and he's there to say he kept his promise, but he's a little bit upset and disappointed that the doctor didn't go ahead and demolish the building on uh, his own or with a crew of his own. Dr. Farina and the town had been in a long-standing dispute. Town wanted the building torn down, calling it an eyesore. And uh, I'm going to be very interested to see Lindsay Idaluka's report over on NBC10 for the new news when she summarizes this uh, in more detail. But uh, Lindsay, as I just talked to me via email about it, and that's kind of the essence of uh, what was said. So I guess the whole building's coming down. Uh, they're obviously, I'm going to assume, not going to preserve the painting in any form. <laughs> but we'll hear more later today uh, at noon. Now, uh, let's uh, bring Zach into the conversation now because uh, according to the every indication, boy, the temperatures are going to go down this Thanksgiving week. It's going to be a real big conversation, specifically for the travel day and Thanksgiving itself. But today, we're still doing all right. The clouds are in place for the moment. There are no rain showers. And in fact, we're getting close to 50 degrees already down towards the water. New Bedford is just shy of it at 49, but to 35 still in Woonsocket and Boroughville, where just that northern tier of Rhode Island saw a little bit of activity around 4th. 30 this morning. Now all of the rain and all of the snow is farther north in the first wave. The L that you see over southern New England on the forecast track, that's going to be out of our way by this evening. But there is a second wave that brings us rain and some flakes for tomorrow. And it's not going to be a big issue, but we do want to be rain ready for tomorrow morning's commute. And you notice that rain and snow line is still farther off to the north. Once this system starts to slip to the east, just on the back side of that, we may pull in a few snow showers again for interior locations. Coastal spots probably don't see it, but once that passes off, high pressure is going to build in and notice the top of the screen, a frigid call it even Arctic air mass is going to be draping in and that is going to return Wednesday evening through the day on Thursday. So Thanksgiving itself could be record breaking cold temperatures. Now the record coldest afternoon high. I know that sounds a little confusing, but the coldest the afternoon has ever been is 30 degrees set back in 2008. We don't even beat that. We shatter it. 26 degrees in Providence alone. Other locations not expected to even get into the mid 20s. And if that wasn't cold enough for you, Black Friday shoppers have to compete with the low teens or the single digits for Friday morning. A little bit better, I guess, Friday afternoon at 35 degrees, but the relief seems to come by the weekend. It comes back up to, what, 50? 50, 50 degrees, so what a swing yeah. in just a few days. Well, that's not enough to actually freeze the ground, I don't think. But this No, I think you need process. a little more in regards to a hard <laughs> freeze, but it's definitely going to make travel oh, yeah. a bit of an issue. Thankfully, there's no rain or snow on the ground to freeze over for more travel concerns, but it's going to be dry, it seems like. Outdoor faucets, close them down. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you have a summer beach cottage somewhere. <laughs> Drain the pipes. Yeah, it's about time. It's that time. All right, uh, a week from today, Monday, November the 26th, is the 75-year observance of a horrible incident for U.S. forces during World War II. 
On that date in 1943, the first guided missile ever used against the United States caused the greatest loss of life at sea in U.S. war history. It was an attack by a German bomber plane on the HMT Rona. HMT stands for? His Majesty's Transport. Transport. Uh, it was a British vessel with U.S. military on board, right? Right. Uh, an Australian captain? Yes. All right. Uh, and the loss was deemed classified, so many details of the incident were never publicized much until today's guest came along. Michael Walsh has written two books on the bombing during 17 years of research and is now producing a documentary on the incident. Now, before we talk with you, Michael, I want to show our friends uh, here on Facebook a brief excerpt of the rough cut of the documentary to give you an idea of what happened that horrible day from some of the survivors of the bombing. It was just a rust bucket, that's all. It hadn't been kept up. And uh, <laughs> we were young. We were invincible, so I made the best of it. We could see the bombers, boy, they were coming across. It must have been about 30 or 35 of them, I don't know exactly how many. And it looked like a little toy aircraft is what it looked like, coming in. When the bomb exploded, that wood splintered and it flew around like a spear. If I had handed you a two by four and asked you to hit me as hard as you could, you never would hit me as hard as the blast when that bomb went off. 300 of the soldiers killed on impact from the missile. The remaining 715 died, either trying to get off the sinking ship or in the water waiting to be rescued. There were 866 survivors, and you've talked with a number of them over the years. That's right. Uh, most of the gentlemen in the clip you saw have passed away. I've uh, been interviewing them for the past 17 years. Um, Saul Gurman, who was the first gentleman on, he's still alive and he lives in Massachusetts. Why was it classified? Uh, even family members of, of the deceased didn't even know that uh, their loved ones had died for a, quite, a, quite a long period after the incident. Well, that was the shame of it. Um, nobody knows for sure why it was classified. But the belief is that the U.S. didn't want people to know about this guided missile because it caused so much damage. Hmm. And the British, who, whose ship it was, it was like nobody owned this tragedy. It was a British ship, but it was a U.S. Army Air Corps man. Um, the, I don't think they wanted, as a matter of fact, I know this. I went to the National Archives, and they didn't want most of this information released, at least right away. And once it became classified, it didn't get cleared until the Freedom of Information Act. Did you in initiate that, or was that initiated by the I survivors? did not initiate it. One of the survivors, John Fevet, who, uh, who I've interviewed over the years, um, started, he, he did research, he started to put together um, an organization to get that memorial that you saw in the clip, and he also uh, helped start reunions, which they've had uh, one a year for the past 25 years. Is there any reason why a lot, so much of the material is still classified today? Do you know? It's, I don't believe it is classified anymore. I mean, my wife and I have been to the National Archive and it seems to all be declassified. Um, but it's so little known, there's nobody out there. And I know this is going to sound like bragging. I did two books. There's only four books on the entire incident. Hmm. And the two other authors have passed away. It's just like has no traction. Yeah. The men came from all over the United States, so there's no one place that generates interest. And from, from the severity of the incident, it sounds like it should be much more prominent in, in the history books about World War II. And uh, obviously, you're, you're taking numerous steps to, to help make that happen. What, what, what's ahead? Obviously, you're, you're still working on this documentary. You plan to release it when? Well, there's actually two documentaries underway right now. Okay. I'm co-producing one with Jack Ballow in um, Ultra Vision Films out of New Jersey. Uh, we met at the last reunion, and he, his wife, her great uncle, was on board and mm. killed. And he developed an interest, and he's been doing research. And we've shared materials, uh, particularly my interviews, which aren't available anymore. Most of the men are gone. And so um, that's the one that's going to come out first. Uh, there's going to be a, 
a trailer. It's being produced right now. It's going to be released on the 26th of this month. Uh, he has a website which we're trying to get people to, ultravisionfilms.com. And um, the other one, which I've been working on over time, has no budget and no, uh, you know how that works. Sure. <laughs> so if you have no money, you don't go anywhere. So it's all been me just slowly pecking away at it. And I've been going to uh, a woman who was a video producer for the History Channel, and she's been helping me work on this. And mine is quite different. Mine intends to show as many of the survivors telling the story as possible. Uh, the other one that's going to come out more, sh more shortly is about three men colliding in history. One is the pilot, Hans Doctorman, uh, the pilot of the plane. Right. There was the, uh, the, the man that developed the missile, um, Herbert Wagner. And then there's Joe Pizinski, the young sailor, uh, young army man that was on board the ship. So Ultravision's films, ultravisionfilms.com is one place to get information. Yes. Is there any, are there any other websites? The main place, if I ever got one piece of information out, it's ronasurvivors.org. And Rona is R-O-H-N-A. Yeah. It's a little, it's, it's a town in India, so it, it's not spelled the way we might think. So R-O-H-N-A, survivors.org. That has lots of information. Uh, Michael is, was, is a retired uh, veteran of the insurance industry, and uh, after retirement, I guess, took this project on, and this has become your second job, so to speak. But I also think uh, an, act of, an act of love or, or an act of just trying to get the survivor's stories out. It is an act of love, and it, 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 I never intended to do any of this. I never intended to write a book. <laughs> I just, uh, you know, I was a video producer in my working life, and I just kept interviewing these men, knowing I needed to preserve their stories. And the book, the two books it eventually turned into, was a good way to preserve each man's story. Each, pair, each chapter is a man's story. Knowing that when I did do the documentary, you really only use a couple of sentences yeah. from each man. And thank you for sharing the story with us. And uh, thank you. check out those, uh, those websites. And uh, we thank you for joining us today.